all right so uh, so once uh, now that you get uh, the basic idea uh, let's now get back to stabilizing bias of a transistor again you know we saw that we were using negative feedback to stabilize the bias current through the transistor we saw two techniques already right why i mean and the basic principle is the same for all of them that is we measure the current in the transistor compare it with the desired current and tweak the the vgs in the right direction now the uh, the current in the transistor can be measured in in either the drain or the source uh, the gate uh, source voltage can be varied by either fixing the source wiggling the gate or fixing the gate wiggling the source so we saw the first thing that we saw was measure the current in the drain vary vgs by keeping the source grounded and wiggling the gate potential that led to the current mirror right that uh, basically the drain and the gate were shorted the next thing that we did was we kept the gate voltage fixed measured the current in the source and varied vgs by wiggling the source now you know we'll do the the other two all right and uh, so what is uh, the stuff that's uh, remaining we keep uh, the uh, the gate fixed uh, and measure current in the in the drain and vary the source okay so let's say this is some vdd we need to fix the voltage at the gate we just use a potential divider i mean that's not the only way to do it but i mean you know if you had a battery you can just put that at the gate so the bottom line is that the voltage of the gate does not does not change okay and uh, so what comment can uh, uh, you uh, so we need to compare so in principle what will we do now we have we need to measure current in the drain and vary the source voltage so in principle what will we do we want to measure current in the drain so where will we put our ammeter in the drain this is an ammeter now and uh, we want to vary the source that's the variable voltage source so what are we going to do that is id if id is greater than i ref what does it mean it means that the vgs is too large but the gate is fixed that means vx which is the source voltage is what does it mean what you should do is the next step don't jump if id is greater than irf it means vgs is too large which means that vx is vx is too small on the four what must you do must increase vx okay now if on the other hand id is less than irf it means vx is too large and must therefore you must reduce vx yes ralph clear okay so now therefore we need to compare two currents id and irf so what physical principle will we use kcl so where do we where do you recommend that i stick the so uh, the uh, the source the current source irf in the drain so you want to compare id and i ref and let that node be y okay 
So, in other words, if I d is greater than I ref, what will happen to the potential of node y? If I d is greater than v uh, y will decrease, right. So, in other words, rather than finding the difference between I d and I ref, you can just monitor the potential of node y. If node y's potential is decreasing, what does it mean? What does it mean? Yes, you guys, yeah, the last row. I d is greater than I ref, and what should you do? Then we must increase V x, right. So, now in a similar vein, if I d is less than I ref, what will happen? to V y, V y will increase and uh, therefore, the bottom line is that if V y goes down, V x must be increased and uh, if V y goes up, V x must be decreased. Okay. All right. So, basically, uh, therefore, we must compare V y. So, therefore, V this V x therefore, is a voltage that is controlled by the voltage V y okay. all right and uh, therefore, it is a voltage controlled voltage source between y and x. So, V y you must compare it against some constant let us call that V ref. We only are interested in figuring out whether V y is going up or going down, correct. The, uh, the only circumstance under which the potential of V y does not change is when I d is exactly equal to I ref, right. So, we compare the difference between some fixed voltage Okay, and go and vary the source voltage in the right direction. So, what is the right direction? If V y goes up, V x must go down. So, what are the signs of the op amp? This is negative and this is positive. Correct? And uh, so, of course, uh, so when the circuit is working, I mean, you know, uh, 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 the circuit is working, uh, what comment can you make about the potential of the, draw of the drain uh, uh, of the transistor? Why? The gain of the op amp is infinite, so and it is a negative feedback. So, the difference between the minus and plus terminals must be 0 and therefore, the potential at the drain is V ref. Is that clear? Okay. So, to keep to ensure that the transistor is in saturation, what comment can we make about V ref? Or uh, rather the question I, I guess I am asking is, will the transistor M 1 remain in sa saturation for all values of V ref? No. So, what is the uh, uh, what are the limits on V ref? Yeah, very good. So, basically we have to ensure that since the drain potential of the transistor is V ref, the to ensure that the transistor operates in saturation, V d must be the drain potential must be can only go as low as one threshold below the gate. So, the gate potential of course, is V d d times R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 okay. and uh, so, therefore, V ref must be greater than or equal to V d d times R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 minus V 
all right and what comment can you make about the uh, the potential at the source how will we find the potential at the source okay v g minus yeah very good so basically uh, how did you get that answer correct so v g s is known why is v g s known well the drain current is forced to be equal to i r f so v g s therefore is nothing but v t plus 2 i d by mu n c ox w by l all right so the voltage at the source is nothing but v d d times r 1 over r 1 plus r 2 minus v t minus square root of 2 i d over mu n c ox w by l all right and uh, so let us imagine for a, for the time being that we uh, had never seen this circuit before right and uh, so uh, and uh, somebody had erased the uh, signs on the op amps how will we figure out the signs on the op amps now we don't know there is no need to panic hmm? or we assume some arbitrary signs let's assume the these signs, then what will you do? Break the loop somewhere, I do not know, I mean, I am going to break the loop say here and I am going to yank one side up. If that goes up, what comment can you make about, uh, so the gate voltage is fixed. If I increase the potential of the source, what comment can you make about the potential of the drain? Goes? why the voltage of the drain is basically uh, uh, you know it is uh, a fight between i r f and i d if i if the source goes up i d must reduce so therefore the current being drawn from node y is smaller than the current that is being pushed into node y so net there is an accumulation of charge at that node which causes the node potential to jump up correct okay if that node goes up, if the drain goes up, what comment if we have chosen these arbitrary signs for the op amp? So, what should be the potential at the output of the op amp? Will go up or go down? Go up. So, is this positive feedback or negative feedback? Positive feedback. So, this is uh, uh, basically means that are the uh, signs of uh, the op amp were chosen to be that we chose was, uh, was incorrect. So, it has to be minus n plus. Is that clear folks? Okay. So, uh, so again this is yet another way of biasing uh, the transistor which uh, looks very different from the previous two, but uh, the principle is the same. Okay. So, now if you want to create a common source amplifier, what do we do? Well, we bias it up. So, the transistor is all ready for action. Okay minus plus. Now, we want to make it look like a common source amplifier. So, uh, so, that basically means that we have
you want that. So, again it is you know what do you call you have to mentally imagine the uh, small signal equivalent of the circuit on the left and do whatever it takes. So, that that incremental network looks like the one on the right. Okay. So, the easy part first what is what are we missing source and R L. Okay. So, I guess this uh, now requires no more elaboration that is V i that is R S. Okay. All right. So, then we need the load resistance. So, what suggestion can you make? Okay. Well, one suggestion is the infinite capacitor. R L. So, this is some V ref. Okay. Now, source and load are done. Uh, now, what all uh, what else needs to be done? Okay, how do I ground the source terminal now? Okay. The suggestion is you put an infinite capacitor here. All right. Does this uh, does this work? What is the incremental? Uh, uh, I mean. If you take, I mean, of course, we know that in reality that infinite capacity is not going to be infinite. After all, it's going to be some large value, okay. Uh, but uh, the uh, remember, what kind of control source is the op amp? So voltage controlled, voltage source. So if you put a capacitor across the output of a voltage source, uh, do you think it makes any difference? You have voltage control voltage source. By definition, a voltage control voltage source is one whose output does not change regardless of what you load it with. So, therefore, putting the voltage control voltage source there, I mean the infinite the large capacitor, the output of the op amp is of no consequence, right. The op amp will still try to, to make sure that the drain potential is a if the gain of the op amp is infinity. What comment will you can you make about the absolute potential of the drain? Will be equal to V ref, irrespective of what else is happening, because the op amp goes and does whatever it takes to keep that potential equal to V ref. Therefore, if the potential of the drain is a constant, what comment can you make about the incremental voltage of the output? If the voltage of the drain is not changing, the output incremental voltage is 0, correct. So, clearly the adding the infinite capacitor there at the source is not is not helping. So, what is the root cause of the problem? What is the root cause of the problem? Because of? Because of the op amp, right. So, we must have some way of getting of breaking this. I mean, the reason why the drain is constant is because of the negative feedback loop created by the op amp, which is going and wiggling the source in exactly the right way so as to keep the drain potential a constant equal to VREF, correct. So, we want that only for the DC picture, we do not want it in the incremental network. So, we must therefore do what to the negative feedback loop in the incremental network. We must break the negative feedback loop in the incremental network. So, how will you break uh, uh, a loop? Yeah. So, one way of doing it is to simply put an put a large an infinite inductor there, right? Or put a large resistor there. So, in either case, what happens? Well, for uh, uh, for small signals, therefore, this becomes an open circuit. So, the op amp even though it is uh, it creates a negative feedback loop around the transistor for for purposes of establishing the operating point, it vanishes from the scenario for incremental signals right. And of course, this capacitor shorts the 
source to ground. All right. So, this is yet another common source amplifier, which looks as you can see quite different from the other three common source amplifiers we have seen so far. The first one of course, was the open loop bias stabilization one, where we just applied a gate source voltage. Uh, and then the second one was the one which used uh, a drain feedback to stabilize the bias current. The third one was one where we uh, uh, we put a current source in the source right and then we uh, another possibility was we said we the poor man's current source is simply using a larger resistor in the source and increasing the supply voltage so that you get the same uh, some similar uh, degree of of insensitivity to changes in the threshold voltage right and this is the uh, this is the i don't know at least the fourth or the fifth circuit that we are seeing correct and this stabilizes again as you can see the uh, uh, the bias current again irrespective of what the temperature is irrespective of what vdd is the drain current in the transistor is always going to be equal to i times is i r f is that clear people now, the last uh, circuit standing is uh, what is the last combination that is standing? Yeah, so we basically uh, we uh, uh, you know the, the gate uh, potential is not known, right. Uh, we compare the we measure the current in the source and then vary the gate source voltage by keeping the source voltage uh, uh, constant and uh, you know uh, fiddling with the gate potential all right so let's see if we can figure this out 